The fierce dragon lords have returned to Talisman, and they all will want to be king and claim the crown of command for themselves. But only one can be victorious. Welcome to the Bottled Imp, exploring the realms of fantasy. My name is Ken Boyter, and today we are looking at the Dragon expansion for Talisman, 4th edition revised. Now you will need the base game to play this. This is the Dragon expansion, and when I first played it with my friends, oh, were we in for a shock? Let's find out why. <laughs> the Dragon expansion from Fantasy Flight. Now, I did mention that you needed the base game. We have done the base game review, so you can check out that on our channel. And we've done pretty much all of the other expansions for Talisman as well. There's only a few left that we've got remaining. There is also, coming soon, the Cataclysm. That's going to be brand new from Fantasy Flight in, in literally a couple of weeks' time. Anyway, let's crack on with the dragon. What else do you get in the box apart from the usual suspects? And what I mean by that is... The characters. Most expansions you get new characters. This one you get six new characters. You also get three alternate cards. You also get a double-sided board that you simply overlay and that covers the inner region. You also get three Draconic Lord cards and their corresponding deck of cards. Plus, you get loads of these tokens. Now, I'll just show you one of them. But you get loads of these tokens, and you're meant to have them hidden away. So, because you draw them from some sort of hidden bag. You also get these dragon scales. Now, again, the dragon scales go in with the tokens, and we'll go into further detail about these now. I'm going to do the easy stuff first. And the easy stuff is the characters. You get six new characters, as I said. So we have the Fire Wizard. You also get the Dragon Priest. Oh, what's that? Yeah, Priestess, not Priest. You get the Dragon Rider. You also get the Conjurer. And the Minotaur and you get the Dragon Hunter. So they are all very well themed in this expansion. Some of the characters in previous expansions haven't been totally themed to what they're trying to do. This one, they're all dragon based as you'd expect. And look at this figure. You get all the figures with them as well. This one's huge. This is the biggest figure that Talisman has produced. Now I do paint all the figures myself, as you could probably guess, with the varying different standards of quality. They do come uh, unpainted and they again they're nicely detailed. You also get three alternate ending cards. Now what have we got here? We've got the Dominion of Dragons, we've got the Dragon Slayers and we've also got the Dragon King. Now these alternate ending cards, if you've never played with them before, if you haven't got an expansion, basically some are revealed, and you can tell that by the little star in the corner, and some are hidden. Now this one is from a different expansion, and that has a moon. And what you do is, before the game, you decide how, what outcome you want, what are the winning conditions. You can have it where there's no alternate ending cards, or you can have it where you choose which one you want, and those are the ones with the little star in the corner. And you simply then place it in the middle of the board. Or you can choose ones that just have the moon in the corner. And what you do there is you put them all face down, you shuffle them up, and then you select one at random. Nobody knows what the end condition is. Now obviously you can't then form a strategy in, in order to sort of how to win. Whereas if they, you're playing with a revealed one, then you can obviously choose a strategy because it might be that you need to collect the most gold in order to win, that kind of thing. So you get three new alternate ending cards. What you also get is, and this is an intriguing aspect, instead of the previous corner board expansions where the expansion actually fits onto the corners, 
This one overlays the middle region, sorry, the inner region, and that means that the inner region as you know it is no longer. And it's replaced by this one on one side, which is fairly similar to the original. So as you can see, you've got dicing with death, for example, where you roll two dice for yourself and two dice for death, and whoever rolls highest then wins. You are dicing with a dragon. <laughs> now the only difference is if you lose against death, you lose a life. Here you lose one gold. So there are a few tweaks, but they're dragon themed. So basically you've got the dragon stone mines, and that's similar to the mines. Exactly the same mechanic in order to win that space and proceed to the crown of command. So that really, that side is the easier of the two. On the other side though, you have the Dragon Tower. Now the Dragon Tower, is the Crown of Command is right at the top of the Dragon Tower. Now this shows the inside of the Dragon Tower with the steps going up. So what you will simply do is, if you make it through the, port, uh, the Portal of Power, you will then be moving one step at a time, potentially. You don't roll the die, like the original, you simply move on there and then what you'll be doing is you'll be drawing one card. Now you'll be drawing from one of these three Dragon Lord decks and it depends who the king is and I'll explain exactly what that is. The king is denoted by the king token and let's say it's yellow, this dragon here. The yellow dragon is the king and you will simply draw one of these cards and this time it happens to be an enemy, it's a dragon. Now you have to resolve these cards as usual. If you win in this region, climbing up these stairs, if you win, you then actually move an extra uh, space. And that is actually the end of your go. You keep the dragon as a t trophy as normal. Then what happens is on your next go, you will then move on again. And you will do follow the instruction, which normally says draw one card. Some of them though, this one here says draw two cards, but if you get defeated, so if you pull a monster, an enemy out, and you actually lose, it says move back one space, so you'll have to move back one space. So if you were here and it says, you know, move back one space, you'll obviously go back one space. It is fairly simple, but I tell you what, it is quite tricky to get up those stairs. And that is quite a good mechanic going back and forth because that means that it gives other characters time to catch you up and there's you know and, and actually beat you to the crown of command. So that's the board. Then what we have is the setup is you obviously divide the three different coloured decks and place them next to the three dragon lords. You choose who the dragon king is and you simply do that by flipping over the actual dragon lord cards, these big cards here, and you will then pull one out at random. So let's say we pulled out the yellow one. This dragon starts as the king. Then what happens is, on your go, you will be pulling, as I say, the secret bag, you'll be pulling out one of these tokens. So before you do anything on your go, you pull one of these out, and then you resolve whatever this happens to be. Now I'm just gonna quickly go through each of the tokens that you could be pulling out. This one is Dragon Strike, and as you can see, there's two little uh, symbols on there that denotes that you have to pull <laughs> two more of these out. And you keep going until you actually don't pull one of these dragon strikes out. If you pull another dragon strike out, then you have to pull two more, etc., etc. So some of these can mount up. There are fewer of those than the other tokens. Then we have Dragon Rage. Now you definitely don't want to be pulling Dragon Rage out. Dragon Rage simply means that whoever is king, so if it was red, so and we'll go into how it swaps over in a second you will then face that dragon's rage. And there's a little bit of text down here. This one says, you have to discard a follower. And if you haven't got a follower, then you lose a life. So some characters only start with four lives, remember. Equally, the yellow is actually lose an object. And if you haven't got an object, you lose a life. And the green one is lose a spell. And if you haven't got any spells, you lose a life. Now, when we first played this, the Dragon Rage was a killer, literally. We got through so many characters because we just kept pulling out the Dragon Rage. There are a few things to protect you from Dragon Rage, like one of the characters actually has protection from Dragon Rage, it doesn't affect her. That is a very good character to get. So that's Dragon Rage. And the other token that you might pull out is the Slumber. 
the sleeping dragon. Oh, and that's actually to your advantage because what you do is you will, if there are any enemy dragons on the board, you can place that on one of them and it reduces their value by three. So this one happens to be strength nine and obviously it's now strength six. So it makes it easier to kill them because obviously you're having a surprise attack, they're asleep. Now, if you do land on it, Again, you take that into consideration when you do the battle. If you win, you simply take the uh, dragon as a trophy and then you discard the token. If you lose, you have to discard the token and obviously the dragon will remain there and it's woken up so it's back to its full strength. And when you take them as a trophy, they go back up to their full strength or craft value. And then we have the dragon scales. Now this one slightly confusing, not confusing, it's, it's slightly complicated because these dragon scales come in three different colours. There's green, red and yellow which tie into the different dragon lords and they have multiple functions. So for example if you were to pull a green one out you place it on the green dragon and you will keep doing that and that's the end of your, your tr pulling out. That is resolved. If for example a red one comes out again you do the same. But as soon as one of them gets three dragon tokens on them of their colour, so let's say two more turns and green gets two more tokens, they then become the dragon king and you move the dragon crown token to that card. So obviously any dragon rage that happens, well here's the king, this one is you will be losing spells. and they, So throughout the game the crown does move quite frequently because there are lots of dragon scales in the bag for you to pick out. Now, once there's three, so let's just find another couple here. So let's, as I say, there's three of these dragon scales that come out. Now the third one means, yes, that green one would be king. What happens is you discard two of those tokens off the board. Then what you do is that other dragon token goes to the space, let's say the Minotaur was there, he pulled out the third dragon green token, and it goes on the space. And again, that's resolved. And then you will roll your dice for your move. Yeah. So that dragon token is there. If, there are no, if, if there's already a dragon token on that space, it goes anti-clockwise to the next one. If there's no spaces, then unfortunately in that region, unfortunately you discard the dragon to scale, but you have to suffer the dragon rage. So if your character does land on an actual dragon scale that matches whoever the dragon king is, then you have to encounter that scale. And what that means is, so for example here we've got green is the king, I've landed on green, then I then take the corresponding card, so this happens to be green, and you then resolve that card. So you don't take a base game adventure card, you actually take whichever colour is the king. So for example, this is a magic object, so I would obviously just resolve that in a normal way. Now, even if there is an enemy there, I would still have to draw another card. Now what you also do with the dragon scales is, if there was an enemy there, for example this dragon, and I landed on there, I would still, and if it was green and the, the king was green, then I would still take another one of these. So in this case it's the stranger. Then I would resolve it in turn order like normal. Now this turn order is, this dragon is turn order of two, and this one's a turn order of four. So you've got that little number down there in the corner. I would then f do the fighting first. And if I was successful and I beat the dragon, then what I would do is I would take the card as a trophy as normal, plus I would get to keep the dragon scale. And this is the other use for the dragon scale. The dragon scale you will then place in your own play area. And what that means is there's two functions to this. For each of your dragon scales that you have, you can add one to your attack score. So obviously the more dragon scales you have, the better your chances of beating big beefy, powerful dragons. The other thing you can do with your dragon scale is you can use them to negate the dragon rage. So, like we said, 
if there was the dragon rage that happens, which is this token here, one way is you can say, well, actually, I'm discarding a dragon token, and therefore, a dragon scale, I should say, and therefore I don't suffer the dragon rage. So they are very, very useful. And that is pretty much the actual game mechanics, and I've explained everything of how you actually play with the expansion. Now, when we first played this, I'm all excited. Whenever I get new expansions, I want to go through the cards. I want to get, you know, flip these over as much as I can to find new potions, new spells, whatever. Don't do it. <laughs> it was a big mistake. Basically, there's lots of big, powerful dragons in these decks. So if you're pulling from these decks and you've just started out, your character isn't that well equipped. You know, you've probably got a strength of four or a craft of four. So it's very difficult to fight and beat these dragons. So we just were bombarded by dragons. We had loads of dragon scales there. Dragon rage was coming down on us. It was brutal. We actually got through loads of characters, more so than you would ever normally do. Sometimes you might get through one character and start with a new character, maybe two if you're really unlucky. But this, I think all of us went through about three or four characters and we were playing for ages and nobody really seemed to be levelling up or getting close to getting to the Crown of Command. So, my advice is, play this if you're a seasoned talisman player. Do not get this as your first expansion, that would be my advice, because it is brutal. It will basically chew you up and spit you out. You need to know, you know, power up fairly quickly in order to withstand all of this, you know, all the, the different power, powerful dragons. And I would recommend not necessarily playing this with other expansions or too many other expansions because there is enough going on here to make it a real challenge. So if you're a seasoned player, I would then still recommend maybe just putting one or two other expansions in, maybe the city or maybe the woodland expansion, or maybe death. Obviously, death is a you know a mini expansion. We actually played this purely with the dragon expansion, the base game, and we put the harbinger expansion in. Now, the harbinger, we have done a review on that. That's actually quite um, brutal in itself, anyway, and it adds a real bleak tone to the game. So it really does suit. Those thematically went beautifully beautifully because you've got the dragons coming in, there's chaos when the dragon strikes and honestly, it's a fun expansion, but it's not for the fate hearted. I would recommend it, but you have been warned. <laughs> oh, it's the dragon expansion. Seriously, you will get burned and that's that's no lie. Um, it's a lot of fun. But be prepared, be prepared for a punishing game. That's all I'm saying. Yes, the Dragon Expansion 4, the base game of Talisman. We have done, as I say, lots of other reviews on Talisman. Check those out. We've also got our own website, thebottledimp.com. And obviously, we've got Facebook and Twitter. It's all very exciting. But remember to always, always keep your games unreal. Because that is the fantasy way. Until next time. Thank you very much for watching.